guys, Tech Time here and I am back again with a brand new video. Welcome back to the channel. Before I begin, as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching this one. If you watched previous videos, I also want to thank you. And if you haven't subscribed already, the subscribe button is right below that like button if you also want to like the video on the way. Also, if you want to find me somewhere else, I'll leave my Twitter username and my Snapchat down in the description. So yeah, if you want to catch me there, I'll reply if you have any questions. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the LG X-Charge. So I know long overdue, I did an unboxing on it a few months back, but I just couldn't get my hands on it again until now. So here we are with the full review. So let's get straight to it. So let's start with the design. Now on the front you do have your 5.5 inch 720p panel, now it is IPS panel not AMOLED and I expect that from a phone of this price point. And one thing that I do gotta say about it, it's a pretty good panel, um, it, has, it produces good colors. So two, two downsides of having this display, so one is the brightness, two is the resolution. Now it is a pretty good panel and it does get bright indoors. But once you step outdoors, it's kind of hard to see even at full brightness. So yeah, keep that in mind if you're thinking about getting this phone. It is a good display though, don't get me wrong. It's just I wish it was brighter and I wish the resolution was just 1080p. But I, I, I understand for a phone that only costs $80, sacrifices had to be made. Okay, so also on the front you do have your 5 megapixel camera with a front facing LED flash if you're into that. And on the bottom, you do have your micro USB, and yes, it does support quick charge, and that's really good, especially for the size of the battery, and the battery is pretty special, I'll cover it in a minute. And you also have the legendary headphone jack, um, thank god it's still on budget phones. And on the right hand side, you do have your volume up and down, and one complaint that I do have about those is that they're kind of mushy, not really tactile, not as tactile as I would like. And on the right hand side, uh, kind of weird for an LG phone, you do have your power button, which for some reason is a little bit more tactile than the volume up and down. I don't know, to me that's just a lack of consistency. And it's, it's like I said, it's kind of different style. It's not, it's not on the back anymore, it is on the right hand side. Now ergonomics wise, so on the back you do have this kind of texture, uh, that plastic texture that a lot of plastic phones have. And it feels pretty good, it's not really that slippery, which is good. So the ergonomic overall is pretty good, and it does curve on the edges from the back, uh, which gives it a nice feel in the hand. And you also have the LG logo, and your 13 megapixel camera with the LED flash, which I will cover in a bit, and a bottom firing speaker. So let's talk about speed. Now, in day-to-day -day tests, this phone performs really well, so if you want to make a quick call, um, send a text to someone or just check your social media so this phone can handle this type of stuff no problem at all um, it's really fast like I said I mean opening up so opening up your phone app opening up your messaging app it's quick it's snappy and it's really smooth and I like it now in terms of gaming it's 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 usable but I wouldn't play heavy demanding games where they so I want to download games where they demand a lot of um, processing power because this is a budget processor. It's not really meant for the people who game a lot on their phones. But it does have 16 gigabytes of storage. Only half of it is, um, you can only use about 8 gigabytes. So I, highly rec I, I would highly recommend to install uh, a micro SD card, which this phone supports. And it also does have 2 gigabytes of RAM. Now let's let's talk about the so now let's talk about the camera. So the camera is a 13 megapixel sensor, and for a budget phone, it performs well. Now it's not really outstanding. It's not really the worst thing that I've ever seen from a budget phone, uh, but it's not really the best. So let's start by so let's start with launching the camera. So the camera app is straightforward, simple, and I like that. So, and taking pictures on this phone is really snappy, so you just, um, as soon as you launch the camera, you want to take a picture, 3, 2, 1, boom, that fast. It's really, really fast, and I really enjoy taking pictures with this phone. Now, picture quality. So the type of pictures that this phone can produce are decent. In terms of color reproduction, it's good. Again, not great, but definitely usable, and it's definitely decent. So it likes dynamic range, it likes contrast, 
And one thing also, one positive thing that I noticed about it is that this phone focuses really quick. So as soon as you point on an object, the autofocus on here is outstanding. It actually surprised me. So there's that. Um, otherwise, for the money, it's a really, it's a really decent camera. And the front-facing camera has a wide-angle lens. So for the, if you if you're into selfies, you can take wide-angle selfies. Now let's talk about the one thing that this phone excels at and it, it performs better than flagships, the phones that cost eight, nine thousand dollars. Shout out to the iPhone 10. So this phone supports a large 4,500 milliamp hour battery and it does support quick charge, which is amazing. So battery life, this phone can easily last you two days. And when I say two days, I'm talking about if you're a heavy user, if you watch videos a lot, and you game a lot, like I said, heavy demanding games, I will try and stay away from, but light gaming is really good on it. But yeah, the battery life on here is outstanding. It's, it can it competes, it's, it beats out a lot of flagships. And the quick charge feature actually is a really nice touch because if you didn't have quick charge, you would spend a long time charging this phone. It would probably take you few hours. Now one small complaint and this might seem like I'm complaining about this phone but I'm really not. I'm actually amazed about uh, I'm actually amazed that LG was able to pull off a budget phone with this type of specs. But yeah so it does not really have USB-C which in 2018 is kind of disappointing. The standard right now is USB-C. Hopefully in the next generation of this phone and hopefully we do get a next generation uh, LG can pull off USB-C. And you can double tap to wake the display. I really like this feature. Um, I wish more manufacturers and more companies can uh, put this feature on other phones. Uh, I don't know why they don't do it. So double tap to wake, double tap to unlock. Really useful, really fast. Now, let's talk about the speaker quality. So let me play a video for you guys and I'll let you guys hear the speaker. So here it is, highest volumes, 3, 2, 1. This is your first look at the brand new LG G7 ThinQ. Now that whole long new name, LG G7 ThinQ, is... Okay, so here's what I do have to say about the speaker. It's a pretty good speaker, um, but you can block it with your hand since it is backward facing. And also, it does distort a little bit at highest volumes, but again, this phone does support a 3.5mm headphone jack and that's what I presume most people will most people that watch a lot of videos probably use headphones um, at least that's what I do so speaker quality really matters for me when I'm making phone calls and I use the speaker when I make phone calls but hey that's just me okay so this is pretty much like the summary review of this phone um, Overall, it's a really good phone for the price. $80, you get a large 4500 milliamp hour battery that lasts you a long time. You get 2 gigabytes of RAM, 13 megapixel camera, a 5 megapixel front facing camera, and the camera is a decent camera for the price. It, it's definitely uh, up there in the budget world. Not the best, not the worst. And uh, the only really disappointing thing about this phone is the 5.5 inch display. I just wish that, uh, that it was a little bit brighter and the resolution was 1080p. But I guess for $80 I really can't ask for a lot. Sacrifices had to be made in order to pull off a phone with such, um, with such specs. Because I mean that, that, that battery is really really good and if you really care about battery life and that's your main concern then this phone is for you. Even if you are looking for a flagship, um, if, if your main concern is battery, I would try and check this phone out because for $80 it's just impressive. So yeah, let me end it here. I want to thank you all so much for watching this one and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.